Good afternoon folks, welcome to the first in a series on calculations for National 5 Chemistry. These are the five types of calculation you're required to do for National 5 in any exam. There's ones involving moles and mass and concentration, sometimes a combination of all three. There's titration calculations, which at first look scary, but once you get the hang of them, they're actually a relative gift. Percentage mass, also a gift. Uh, rate uh, are straightforward. The only sneaky part in rate is uh, are the units, but we'll talk about that later on. And lastly, energy calculations involving CM delta T, usually where we burn a fuel and heat some water up. I think the first one we will start with, uh, oddly enough, is number one. So for these calculations, folks, we're going to invoke these two triangles. Um, a very quick run through how to use these triangles. For any particular triangle, you need to know two of the three pieces of information. And you can work out the third one, the one you don't know, by covering it up. Uh, for example, if you um, knew the GFM and the moles, you'd want to know the mass. So you'd cover up mass and its moles times GFM. Uh, or if you knew the mass and the GFM and you didn't know the moles, you'd cover up the moles and now it's mass over, which means divided by GFM. Just a quick run through. I'm sure you know how to use these triangles. I think they've used them in maths pretty universally. They are very handy. They have their limitations, but that's for higher. So for a meantime for National 5, we'll just stick to these. So mass, moles and GFM. If you were ever in my class, you'll have seen my feeble comedy drawing efforts to show a mole being terrified by a cartoon one ton weight above its head. That's how you remember the position of these. They are also in your data book, but your data book uses slightly odd uh, notation and symbols for it. There is this uh, other one here, which deals with dissolved things, with solutions. So if you're talking about volumes and concentrations, this is the triangle that we're going to invoke here. It's got moles now on the top. I joke that this is the moles revenge, this triangle, because moles is now dominating these two guys. This is short for concentration of the solution, and this is the volume of the solution. I didn't put any units over here because I assumed that you would realise that mass is in grams, moles, oddly enough, are in moles, um, and GFM doesn't really have a unit. We'll come back to exactly what GFM actually means in the near future. And over here, concentration is in moles per litre, which uh, a physics department and modern notation is M-O-L, L to the minus one. Because I'm, bit of, because I'm a bit of an old fart, I sometimes tend to flip to this notation here, which is moles slash litres. Um, both are currently, at the time of making this video, both are acceptable to chemistry. That one there is not acceptable to physics, so give me a verbal slap every time I use this one, because it's not really the proper one. Litres. It's got to be in litres for the volume, otherwise your calculations get completely screwed up. So let's not make that mistake. By the way, just a brief... For a, if you're not sure how to turn millilitres into litres, you divide by 1,000. So if you had 250 millilitres, for example, divide that by 1,000. If you can't do that in your head, it doesn't make you a bad person, but you might not want to work on your maths in your head. Move the decimal point three places, and you end up with 0 0.25 litres. So divide by 1,000 um, to change millilitres into uh, liters. All right, let's push on. Let's see if I can come up with an example. So for the first example here, we've got a question asking you what mass or how heavy would 1.75 moles of copper 2 oxide be? Uh, if you're not sure how to construct formula, I have got a video on how to build formula, so I'll put a link in the doobly-doo down below this video, uh, and you can go and look that up. So first of all, we need the correct formula. That lets us work out the GFM. Um, and of course, the thing we're looking for here is the mass. So we'd be covering up the mass. We'd need to know moles, which we do, 1.75 moles. And we need to know GFM. The question doesn't tell us, but we can work it out. So let's do that. The formula for copper oxide is copper, the valency is 2. So copper valency 2, oxygen valency 2, down here as well, because it's in group 6. Go and look at the video. Uh, and the 2s cancel out, and you end up with CuO. So let's work out the GFM from there. We've got one oxygen, so that's one times 16. I'm so desperately sad, I don't even need to go and look up the um, the mass number of oxygen. You are not so sad as me, though, so you need to go and look it up. One copper, I believe, is 60... 
<laughs> I'm joking about it. I actually can't remember copper. Hold on, I'm just going to check. I thought copper was 64.5, 63.5 for copper when I went and checked it. That's on page 7 of your data book, folks, on the least readable page in the world ever. I don't know who thought of the typeface on that one. 63.5 plus 16 takes us up to 79.5. That is the GFM, so 79.5. And the, we had 1.75 moles, 1.75. I just realised I'm going to need to go and get a calculator again. So... My vintage calculator here from 1994, um, older than most of the staff. Where are we? 1.75 times 79.5 um, uh, gives us. That oh, can't be right. So much for my vintage calculator accuracy. Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that would be right, actually. Yeah. You get to see my incompetence on screen here, folks. I just didn't pick very friendly numbers. Let's call it the nearest whole number there, 139 grams. Um, there you go, question done. Oh, a word on units. In chemistry at National 5, they almost always tell you the unit in the question. Towards the end of this video, I'll try and see if I can print out an actual past paper question and I'll show you exactly what I mean. The the wording would be, how heavy in grams would 1.75 moles of copper oxide be? Now, I say to my guys, and the physics people hate this, and I can understand why, nine times, if they give you the unit in the question, don't bother putting a unit in the answer. Now, the science behind that is horrendous, I agree. But the reason I'm saying that is because if you make a mistake with the unit, then it will cost you the mark. If you don't put the unit in, but they mention the unit in the question, and you just put the number, you will not lose a mark. So the safer way to do it is not to put any units in. There is only one exception to that. That was category four, rates questions. But we'll see when we get to that video. Let's have a look at an example of a calculation on this type, uh, dealing with solutions. So for our question here, we've got what volume of water would I dissolve 0 0.75 moles of sodium chloride in to produce a solution of 1.5 moles per litre? Now this one's just a little bit sneakier because I have quoted sodium chloride here automatically with the hope, and the SQ will do the same, with the hope that once you see this you start to calculate a GFM. But there is no need to calculate a GFM. If you look at the types of data you're given, first of all they are requesting a volume. The other types of data they've given you is 0 0.75 moles, so they've given you a moles, and this, they haven't used the concentration word here, but hopefully they're expecting that when you see moles per litre, you realise, oh, that's a concentration. So they've given you a concentration, they've given you a moles, and they're asking for a volume, so it is entirely just this triangle here. This one, uh, in this case, the unknown quantity is volume, and we know moles. It's 0 0.75, and we know the concentration is actually 1.5, so this is actually straightforward. And also, again, the question would say, my apologies, what volume of water... Uh, now I'm going to make this slightly sneaky. What volume of water in millilitres would I dissolve? 0 0.5 moles, there we go. So, let's, let's go back to the calculation here, guys. Let's put the numbers in. We've got um, 0 0.75 on the top line. And we've got 1.5 on the bottom line, so 0 0.75 over 1.5. Let's crank the ancient calculator again. Um, 0.75 over 1.5 gives us that. Now, at this point, if you just write down, oh yeah, the, well, the answer is 0 0.5, then you're going to lose a mark because... The volume is calculated in litres. That's because the concentration is in moles per litre. The volume has always got to be um, coming out in litres. And we got 0 0.5, so that's 0 0.5 litres, but the question was asking in millilitres. So this time around, we're going the opposite way around. We're going from litres to millilitres, so multiply by 1,000, and you end up with 500 uh, millilitres, centimetres cubed. It's the same thing. One millilitre is one centimetre cubed. If you ever come across that, by the way, so 1 ml equals 1 cm cubed. Are we done? Very nearly. And courtesy of the SQA, 
from 2018, I think. Here is um, what you could call a worst uh, possible scenario question, really. Let's have a look at it. Um, it's a three marker, so it looks horrendous, but it's actually not too difficult. It says, calculate the mass in grams. See what I mean about the units? Already in the question. So we'll just have a number. So we're looking for a mass. So you might be tempted to say, oh yeah, it must be the mass moles and GFM triangle. So we've got mass, moles, and GFM. Easy. wonder why it's three marks. Calculate the mass. That means we would need to know uh, the moles and the GFM. Sodium carbonate. They even give you so well, oh, that means we can work it. They give you the formula. How nice. You can work at the GFM. Required to prepare 200 mils of a one mole per litre solution. Eh, I'm not seeing a moles there. That's because there isn't one. But what they have given you is they have given you a volume and they have given you a concentration. So that means we can actually use a combination of these two triangles together. And that's why it's worth three marks. So let's have a look at moles revenge. So we have moles, we have concentration, and we have volume in litres. Uh, so what do we need to do here? Um, we do know the volume, we do know the concentration. That means we know these two, and that means we can use these two together, multiply them, and that will tell us the moles. Then we can feed the moles into here because we know what the formula is so we can work out the GFM we just worked out the moles from this triangle here and now we can finally work out the mass and that ladies and gents is why it's worth three marks it's not difficult it's just lots of different stages so let's have a go at them let's work out the moles first using concentration times volume and there are lots of little things you need to pay attention to which is why I make these videos concentration is easy it's one moles per litre um, the volume is not 200 though, the volume's got to be in litres, so that becomes 0 0.2. So 1 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.2 for the moles. So now we know this, GFM of sodium carbonate, I'm seeing two lots of sodium, so that's 2 times 23, um, one lot of carbon, so that's 1 times 12, and three lots of oxygen, that's 3 times um, 16, which is... That's, uh, that's 48, plus 12, plus 23, um, gives us 83. So the GFM is uh, 83. The moles are 0 0.2. We multiply these two together because they're side by side. So 83 times 0 0.2 gives us 16.6. That is our mass. And that's three marks, just like that. We're done, actually. Uh, so, back to this again. National 5 calculations. Moles, mass, concentrations, using the two triangles, and last of all, a combination of the two triangles. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.